So here I go, I'm going to my math lab. I already have an icon, that makes it easy. And I'm going to sign in. And sign in. And go to your class. And click on assignments. Now this is where students go. And go down to exam one. And I'm going to start test. Now, because I'm the teacher, uh, Proctor U did not come up. It can't be fooled, I've tried. But you are students, and at this point, Proctor U will come up and if you haven't already made an account, you can make an account and then you'll uh, you'll go through the whole process that you see in the video about ProctorU and I'm reposting that in announcements. So it'll be in announcements and in your email, what to expect and you'll pay with $4.25, not exorbitant with either a gift card or a credit card or a debit card. And then you'll take the test like normal. It's all a normal process. You don't have to do anything except click on start test. That's as hard as it gets. Now. Professor, when do we have to take this test? by next Wednesday. Okay, so I could do it this weekend if I wanted to? Sure. Okay, awesome. Oh, so it's not due Sunday, because I think the due date was like Sunday. I That's what I remember. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, I, I had it set for, yeah, February 3rd. And the that's due date is the 3rd of February. Pardon me? The due date is the 3rd of February. Correct, and that's a Wednesday. According to this, Wednesday, February 3rd. Oh. I'm, okay, sorry, that was my fault. I just. No, that's okay. That's okay. I get dates wrong all the time. Okay. Like thinking, like yesterday, thinking that it was already Thursday. Yes, it's not. Today is Thursday. I have that on good authority. Okay, now I'm doing what you shouldn't do, and that's um, getting out of the test. I know it's going to yell at me. Yes, it's yelling at me. Okay. And let us go to practice exam one. Now it's going to say start test, but it's not a test. It's a quiz. Doesn't matter. The fact is, that all of your questions, some of you have already done all of them. Okay, now I think it probably would be a good idea to go over some of the harder problems, but the problem is that what everybody considers harder or easier is, is kind of, you know, an individual thing thing. So unless, unless you have some requests because you've already gone over the practice test, I'm just going to go through the practice test and look for the problems that are just often missed by students, okay? This is our day to go over the practice test and um, the videos are already up in module three. Oh, I did forget to show you something. So,
Um, let us go back. Let us go to my NWAC. And go to Canvas. Your Canvas class. And go to Modules. All right, here was week three. Now week four. Week four is exam week. Now, what I'm asking you to do is to show me your um, very neat scratch paper, neat and numbered scratch paper. And what I want you to do is upload it. Okay, now I need to go to student view. This is how you upload your scratch work to me. Now the best and easiest way to do this is to download a free scanner to your smartphone like um, Adobe Scanner or um, Lens, L-E-N-S, which is Microsoft Scanner, but there are a bunch of free scanners that will upload your work as PDFs, and it's actually easier that way, but this is how you upload your work, okay? So I am going to go back, except of course, I need to unstudent myself for a minute. I don't know if that's a word. Um, and now I'm going to restudent myself. And I'm going to go to modules. And I'm going to go to week four. And up here, the very first thing for, Mar for um, uh, week four, it says upload your exam one scratch paper here. And you can see that that it's set for January 30th to February 3rd, but you could take it today if you're ready. It's open. Um, click here. And what you'll see is submit assignment. Well, the uh, the assignment is to upload your scratch paper. So click here. And then down here you'll see file upload. So you choose your file, and it might be a picture, or it might be a PDF, or it might be a Word document. And um, you go ahead and you, you upload it like picture. Let's see, how about a Christmas tree? I don't want a Christmas tree, I want your scratch paper, but pretend that scratch paper. And now I'm going to submit assignment. Now see, you can just keep adding. So if you if you only know how to take photos of your work, then you'll have four photos maybe because you have four pages of, of scratch work calculations that you've done. Maybe you have five or six, it's okay. For each page you wanna upload, you wanna add another page add another file. So maybe I not only want to upload my um, Christmas tree, maybe I want to upload this silly looking Christmas tree with me in front of it. All right, now I'm going to submit my assignment. And you have to give it some time. Photos take longer than PDFs. Oh, I guess it's up. OK, and this says submission details. Please don't send me pictures of Christmas trees. Um, OK, and there you go. It's as hard as that. In other words, it is not hard to upload your scratch paper. And and if you do that and if I can read it, if the problems are numbered, then I'm going to be able to give you partial credit if you miss a problem, and you probably want that. Okay, so 
Not going to force you to, though. So now that we've handled that problem, we are going to go back to the practice exam. And let's see, I was already there. So here, how to find the domain of a rational function. Now, you might already know this, and if you have something you'd rather go over, just let me know. But I am assuming that this might be hard or harder. So let me get some scratch paper up. There. Um, there. And here. And practice exam. Exam one. And that's what we're going to do until you tell me you want to do something else. Um, find the domain of this rational function right there. So that's number number seven in your practice exam. Um, yeah, right, of course. And we're supposed to find the domain. Here's how you do it. The one thing you can never do is let the denominator of a fraction equal zero. So we're going to find out what X will make the denominator equal zero. Okay, so I'm gonna solve for X. So this time I'm going to add three X to both sides. So I will have eight equals three X. And then I'll divide by three and divide by three. So what that means is when you say X equals eight thirds, what that means is this is the number that such that if you put it in for X, you're gonna get zero in your denominator. Well, that means you cannot let X equal that number. All right, so I'm gonna go back here and say, well, I know that eight minus three X cannot equal zero. And that means that eight thirds cannot equal X. Okay, so it's just a matter of how you're given this number x cannot equal eight thirds so somewhere in here a you're going to see x cannot equal eight thirds now you have other possible answers here x is greater than or equal to eight thirds um, x cannot equal four what the heck is four got to do with it x cannot equal zero well in this case if x equaled zero you would have eight minus three times zero, which would be eight minus zero, which would be eight. So the denominator would equal eight. That's not a problem. So that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. This is the only one that's correct. X can be any number in the universe but not eight thirds, period. Oh, and I can't check my answer because it's a quiz. I hate that. All right, let's go on. 
Now, you know by now how to evaluate a function. However, what this does is it does something a little less obvious, and that is this is, if we have eight, number eight, let's just say number eight. Well, okay, number eight. They want us to find f of negative one and f of zero and f of one but they don't give us an equation. What they do give us is a graph. Since what's in parentheses is an X, what you're looking for here is the Y that goes with the X number negative one. So I go to X equals negative one. Let me make that bigger and bigger and bigger. I go to x equals negative one. I go down to the graph and then over here to the y axis and I see, aha, f of negative one is going to be y equals five. So what I do is I go to the answer box and I put in the number five. Not y equals five, but five. There. Now, f of zero. Well, I have to find x equals zero. Here's x equals zero. I go to the graph and it connects me to the y-axis, and notice, well, I mean, gosh, it's already on the y-axis. What I have there is negative three. Oops, and that was negative five. Negative, oh, you poops. Negative five. Negative three. And f of one. I'm, yeah, I'm still weird. F of one is negative five. What is F of negative one? Negative one is right here. Let's go down to the graph. Aha, there it is. That's where X equals negative one if I go over to the y-axis, the number is negative nine. So now, there. Wouldn't one be negative five? One is negative five, yes. Okay. Okay, all right, so, if X is negative one, Y is negative nine. If X is zero, Y is negative three. And if X is one, Y is negative five. There you go. All right, remember how to do these. Slope is rise over run, but there's a catch. It's not that easy. Is that number nine? Yeah, nine. Okay, what you do is you take the rise over the run. Here we're finding the grade. The rise is 0.5, and the run is 2, and the grade is the slant of the treadmill. So we're finding the slant, so 0.5 over 2. 
and I'll get it. Get this. Point five divided by two is point twenty five. or one-fourth. However, they want this given as a percent. I take 0.25 and I multiply it by 100% or 100. And what that gives me is 25%. So in your calculator, all you would do is say times 100. And there you've got 25. So I am going to put 25 in there. Okay, stop me if you don't understand. And that we'll forget about. Okay. And we have pitch, which is also a percent, but it's just the slope. So again, you would say rise over run. Put it in your calculator, multiply by 100, and round to the nearest percent, so to the nearest whole percent. Does anyone need for me to go over that? Okay. Come on. 11. Now we went over this before. This is slope as a rate of change, and what you're doing is you're finding the rate of change of the amount of spending on luxury goods. OK. So for this, since they actually give us points, 2010, 8.1, which means 8.1 billion, billion. And 2017, comma, 27.1 billion spending on luxury goods. How is your yacht today? My goodness. Okay, so for number 11, what I'm going to do is this. I have to decide what I'm going to let x1y1 and x2y2b. So let's see, I need to move that up and that out. It's not going to do any good, is it? Okay. So what, what if I just pull it out like that? And then I can always drag it down. That's what I will do. And then I'll have room over Here. OK, this is number 11. Ah, OK. So X1, Y1. Is going to be 2010. 8.1. And. X2, Y2 is going to be 2017, 27.1. Now, the uh, formula for slope is Y2 minus Y 
1 over x, 2 minus x, 1 equals. Okay, y2 minus y1 is going to be 27.1 minus 8.1. And x2 minus x1 is going to be 2017 minus 2010. So that's where we're at right now. All right, well, 27.1 minus 8.1 is going to be 19, uh, 8.1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's going to be 19. So M will equal 19 on top and 17 on the bottom. So I get my calculator and I click on it, wake it up, and I say 19 divided by 17. No. 7. I am a space cadet today. 7. There. Clear that garbage. 19 divided by 7. Enter. And here's our number. Now, um, I'm going to write down a few digits. M two point seven one four two eight five seven, and that's just because things tend to disappear. Uh, type an integer or a decimal rounded to two decimal places. Okay. Here's the first decimal place. Here's the second decimal place. This four is not big enough to make that one round up to a two. So it's going to stay 2.71. And I uh, mark those out. And my answer is going to be 2.71, and then notice they have the word billion over there. So that would be my answer. And you see how I do, do the work over here, and then transfer the answer over here, which is why, suppose I had left that 17. Now that's a stupid arithmetic error which shows my mind is elsewhere or just not engaged. Um, so this problem would be wrong. But I look at this student's work where I'm the student and I say, well, that's the right formula. So um, yeah, you can't do anything without the right formula. And she's got the right numbers in there. So, yeah, uh, this is obviously just a stupid mistake. And I'm going to give her most of the credit. Like, um, she would have gotten it right if it hadn't been for that stinking little one that jumped in there. So, um, at least half credit, but since, since, she would have gotten it right. Uh, let's give her seven out of 10 points. So instead of getting zero points here, I get seven out of 10 points. That's not bad. So that's an extra motivation. All it is is more work for me. If you don't send me your work, that's fine. I just can't give you any partial credit on problems you miss, but maybe you won't miss any. All right, 
intercepts you know about. Now, using slope and y-intercept, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to use the slope and y-intercept to graph. So first I have to tell, I have to tell my math lab what I'm going to graph. And what I'm going to graph is a straight line. That's a straight line in slope intercept form. So I'm going to start at five. So what does it say? Click the graph to plot the first point. So I'm going to click on that's 0, 6. Aha, look over there though in the upper right hand corner. That tells me I'm on 0, 5. So I click. Kind of a big 0 there, or big dot, but as long as my math lab knows it's supposed to be 0, 5, I'm happy. Now I'm going to go up 10 and to the right 7. So up 10. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And to the right, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah. OK, this is. Let's see. 15 is where I want to be. 0, 15, yeah, and then I want to go to the right 7. Now here's 6, so one more is going to be 7. So 7, 15, yes, that's what it says in the upper right hand corner. So I will click. And now I'm going to save. And move on. Because there is no check my answer. One of the great annoyances. I'd like people to be able to check their answer on the practice exams, but. Oh well, be nice to have that choice. OK, now. Graph the following equation and if possible, determine the slope. This is a horizontal line. This is y equals negative five. So, it's a line. I come down here to negative five and I put a dot, dot, and then I move over a couple of points and another dot. And there's my horizontal line and all horizontal lines have zero slopes. Their slope is zero. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to type. Type. Zero. And move on. OK, if you don't already know that the slope of a horizontal line is zero, that's not a problem. The, the two points I chose were 0, 5 and 2, 5. I mean, 0, negative 5 and 2, negative 5. So you could just use those two points to find the slope and then calculate it. And you would come up with a zero slope. OK, now finding the equations of lines has always been the bane of every college algebra student. Nobody likes it. Find an equation of the line having the given slope and containing the given point. OK, number 15. OK, well, I can use the point slope formula or the slope intercept formula. 
But since the book always uses, well, it uses both, doesn't it? So uh, I am going to use point slope just because I'm used to it. Y minus Y1 equals M, almost said 8, M times X minus X1. And so Y minus Y1, Y minus 2, equals 8 times x minus 3. Okay, first thing I do is I distribute. So I'll have y minus 2 equals 8x minus 24, and then add 2, and then add 2. So y equals 8x minus 22, because negative 24 plus 2 is negative 22. And then I come over here, and it's already got y equals. So all I'm going to type in here is 8x minus 22. Type your answer in slope intercept form. Yes. Use integers or fractions for any numbers or expressions. I, I will do that. Now find the equation of a line containing the given pair of points. That's the ultimate kind of find the equation of a line problem in my head. That's like the quintessential, the real thing. So that would be something I would definitely have to do on paper. I can't imagine how you could not do it on paper. All right, so let me write down the two points. It's just safer that way. Okay, so I'll let this be x1, y1, x2, y2. First step when you're, when you're doing this, you've always got to have the slope first. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that will be negative 21 minus negative 7 over negative 9 minus negative 3. Is that right? Negative 21 minus negative 7, negative 9 minus negative 3. Yes. So that will be negative 21 plus 7 over negative 9 plus 3, so that'll be negative 14 over negative 6, which is 14 over 6, which is, well, 2 goes into 14 and 2 goes into 6, so the quick way to do this by hand is just divide by 2 and divide by 2, and that'll give you 7 thirds. Or you can drag your calculator out and let it play. 14 divided by 6, math, frac, enter, 7 thirds.
Okay, and so I would type seven thirds. Oh. I always want to go to check answer. All right, parallel and perpendicular gave everybody fits. Parallel lines are like two lines that travel side by side forever and ever. They have the same slope. That's parallel. And we're looking for parallel lines. A line that's parallel to the given line, which is 3x minus 4y equals 9. And this other line we're trying to find goes through the given point, which is 6, negative 4, but I don't need it right now. So I am just going to deal with the given line. I have to solve for y. All right, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. So that will give me 0 minus 4y equals, I could say 9 minus 3x, but it's not good form for a line. So negative 3x plus 9. It also could, could mess you up. I know about being messed up. It could mess you up when you're trying to figure out what the slope is. 0 minus 4y is negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 9. So divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. I don't really care about that. I do care about this. This is the slope of the given line. Which means, I turn it off. There, peace. The slope of the given line is three fourths. Mm -hmm. Which means since I'm looking for a line parallel to that line, that line is going to have the same slope. That's the whole reason I did this. Now the given point is the point that the new line is going through. And that's going to be 6, comma, negative 4. So y minus y, 1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus negative 4 equals 3 fourths times x minus 6. And so y plus 4 equals 3 fourths times x minus 6. Now, how do I get rid of a, of, of a fraction? I multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator of the fraction. So I'll multiply over here by 4 over 1, and I'll multiply over here just by 4. So that over here, this 4 and this 4 cancel, leaving me 3 over 1, which is 3 times x minus 6. 
and over here, 4 times y plus 4. And now distribute on both sides, 4y plus 16 equals 3x minus 18. And now I subtract a 16 from both sides. So I've got 4y on the left of the equal sign and 3x. Now, negative plus negative is negative. So the answer is going to be negative. And then 8 plus 6 is 14, carry the 1, 1, 2, 3, minus 34. And then divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. I wish that, it, well, never mind. Um, okay, well, 2. 2 goes into 34 and 4, but let's just do it on the calculator. Negative 34 divided by 4. Math fract. Negative 17 over 2. So this is going to be y equals 3 fourths x minus 17 over 2. Yeah, okay. So that is what I would put in here. It already says y equals. So, 3, 4, x minus I think I can just say 17 divided by 2. 17 divided by 2. Yeah. Okay. Let us move along to perpendicular. That's too hard. All right, perpendicular lines cross each other in a T. They have opposite reciprocal slopes. So perpendicular lines. have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay. So then, <clears throat> this is number 18. If we have, all right, the given line is 6x plus 5y equals 7. And my first step is to find the slope of this line, the given line. That's why it's there. Negative 6x, negative 6 x or minus 6x I should have said. So 5y equals negative 6x plus 7.
well, I don't have to be that careful. Again, I don't care about that number. I do care about this number though. The slope of this line is negative six fifths. Okay, now, and the point, the point the new line is going to go through is nine, negative four. So, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now, the part that's the same is y minus negative 4 equals m times x minus 9. m is going to be the reciprocal of that and the opposite sign. So 5 sixths, positive. That's going to be the slope of this line. To me, that's the hardest part of doing a, a perpendicular line. The equation of a line perpendicular to another line. Okay. So every time it's perpendicular, can we flip the m like that? Flip and negative sign, and opposite sign. Okay. Um, okay, so here I go. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the 6. No, I'm not. See? I jumped ahead by a step and that could mess me up. That'll be six times y plus four. I always like to take care of that right away. So I don't forget. The sixes cancel out, I'll have five over one, which is five. All right, now, now the whole story is just the same as before. You know, any time you use the, uh, the point slope formula. The hard part, again, for me, is remembering the difference, the differences in finding the slopes of parallel lines and perpendicular lines. That can be a toughie. Six Y plus twenty four equals five X minus forty five. Okay, now subtract twenty four. Subtract twenty four. Boom, boom. That leaves me with six Y equals 5x. Now, you could say to yourself, minus 45 minus 24, but I was taught the easiest way to do this is negative 45 plus negative 24. Then all you have to do is add them together. Somehow it just seems easier to me to remember to add them together, but put the sign of both of them. So five plus four is nine, and four plus two is six, and you're going to have negative 69, minus 69. Then divide by six, divide by six, divide by six. So y equals five sixths x minus, now, three goes into each of these. Let's let the calculator do it, but you can do it by hand and it wouldn't be hard. Famous last words. Math, frac, enter. Negative 23 over two. So minus 23 
over two. And again, you have a disgusting equation with fractions all over it. There. Six, five, six fifths, five sixths, ah ha 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 ha, five sixths. Okay, boom. All right, five, six, five, six, X minus 23 over two. Let's go there. Now we're going to solve a system. Five X plus four Y equals negative 13. That's going to be row one. And row two is four X minus y, which is minus 1y, equals negative 2. And says it wants us to use elimination, so I'm going to do that, uh, which means I have to add 5 and 4 together and get 0? No. Or 4 and negative 1? No. But maybe 4 and negative 4 if I multiply row two by four. That's what I'm gonna do. So that'll give me five X plus four Y equals 13. That's not supposed to be an equal sign. It's supposed to be an arrow. And now four times four X is 16 X. Four times negative one Y is negative four Y. And four times negative two is negative eight. So you can see that that zeroes out. Leaving me with 21x equals, ah, did I do that? Yes, yes, okay, that's right. Uh, 13 minus eight is five, yeah, five. And so divide by 21 and divide by 21. And so x equals, 5 over 21. Now, did I make a mistake or is this true? Negative. Ah, never mind. That's a negative 13. Yes, is it? Yeah, it's supposed to be a negative 13. All right. Well, that's a little better. Yes, it is. It's a whole lot better. I mean, really, you can have fraction answers, but that's going to be negative 21. All right, so X equals negative one. That's beautiful. Now, 
now that I have a number for X, I can go back to either one of my original equations and uh, plug in negative one for X and see what I get for Y. Let's use row two. So four times negative one minus one Y or minus Y equals negative two. So negative four minus Y equals negative two. And I add four and I add four. Boom, boom. And I'll get negative Y negative one y, negative y, negative one y, same thing. Equals negative two plus four is positive two. And then when I divide both sides by negative one, boom, 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 y equals negative two. And now I go to, this was row two, so I go to row one, five times negative one plus four times negative two equals thir negative 13. Why do I keep trying to make that positive? Negative five plus negative eight, yes, 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 is negative 13. You bet that is true, true, true. So we have the right answer answers, but it's a point. So it all depends on what the problem is asking. The solution is, aha, uh, type an ordered pair. That tells you, you have to write it as a point. So parentheses, negative one, comma, negative two, what was Y? Negative two, okay. Okay. We have got it. And there's another system. Another system. Basketball player, better do it. Although we did do it before. Does anyone want me to do this again? Say yes or I'm gonna pass it by. Okay, bye basketball player. And we did the woman who's got this obsession with picture frames. Anybody want me to do her? Wait a minute, that doesn't sound good. Okay. Anybody want this? We just did this yesterday, so might be a good idea. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, number 24. We have this line. 3x plus y is strictly less than 2. Okay, so um, I want to make a quick little sketch of this. which means I need some quick and easy and dirty points. So I'm going to just look at the line, 3x plus y equals two. And I want easy points, not hard points. Something to remember. So if x is zero, then clearly three times zero is zero, so y is going to equal two. So that's an easy point. 
but now. Uh, if I let y equal zero, then we're going to have 3x. We're going to have 3x equals 2, and so x equals 2 thirds. And it's just really hard to graph a fraction. I mean, to get it exact. So that means I'm going to come up with some other brilliant plan. What if I let X equal an easy number like one or two? Let's let X equal two, unless you want another number. You see, it doesn't matter. If X equals two, then we're going to have three times two plus y equals two. So six plus y equals two. Subtract six from both sides of the equation and we'll get y equals negative four. Well, that's not a hard point either. The point two negative four, and it's not a fraction. So it's just on a grid, you know, because you just want to make your own little quick grid. Not exact. Okay, so how about one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that would be negative. This is negative, this is positive. Okay. Now, um, OK, so I'm going to have the point 0, 2, which is here. And then the point 2, negative 4, which is here. Now, this was the original inequality. It's going to be a dashed line. Because the equals bar is not underneath there. So dash, 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 dash. I don't have anything over here that would make a dashed line. A wiggly dashed line. Okay, now I'm going to find a test point because this is an inequality, a linear inequality, which means I have to shade one side or the other. So if I, I do get to choose my favorite point zero, 00, which is the easiest. So if 00, zero is my test point, it's right there, and I have 3x plus y, is less than two. So three times zero plus zero is less than two is true. That zero is less than two. So that's true. So that means you're gonna shade over here on this side, which means you now have a mental image, even if it's, I mean, this is not exact but at least I know it's dashed and I know which line, which side of the line is gonna be dashed. Okay, now I'd say, oh no, they've got two with the shading over here, but not so because this is the only one that would work because it's a dashed line. So I choose A. And then I go on. Now, X is less than or equal to three. Um, do you want me to do that one? I think we should, yeah, I think we should. Again, I'm going to do this little little thing with my wavy axes. OK, um, here we're going to have a solid line. But right now I'm going to turn this into a straight line, x equals 3. 
And if I want to, I can get two points. If you don't remember that that's a vertical line, uh, you can get two points. Um, 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 OK, X, Y. The thing is, X has to be three and X has to be three. And now we can choose any two Y coordinates we want, but make them easy. OK, so. Um, how about one and two? No, no, shouldn't put them right next to each other. How about negative one and positive two? So I come over here, one, two, three, to x equals three, and I graph x negative one, no, three negative one, and three positive two. Yeah. That's a two. I declare it a two. This is a one. This is a negative one. All right, and okay, it's gonna be a solid line. And then I choose a test point. So I'll either be shading over here or shading over here. So I'm going to choose my very favorite point again. If X is less than or equal to three, well, and I choose the point zero, zero, I don't have a Y to put that zero in, but I do have an X to put that zero in. So I'll have zero is less than or equal to three, and that's true. It's not equal, but it's less than. So, I'm going to shade on this side. Ooh, and this time I get to actually do it. Okay. Straight line. I go over here to X equals three. And I still have to do it with two points, so I might as well use three, negative one. And then three, two. OK, now I'm going to drag the paint bucket over here and let it go or click. Now you have to click. And there you go. So I'm going to save. And that's my answer. And then. I haven't completed it. Well, fine. Vertex. Did that just appear or was it already there? All right, fine, fine, fine. We have to do that one. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was just looking at one of them. All right. Y is greater than or equal to, so also a solid line, 2 minus 2x. Well, that's Y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 2. And so, notice, that I can use the slope and intercept method to graph, and I don't even have to come up with two points. So, I start at two, and then this is negative two over one, which means go down two and to the right one. So that's what I'm gonna do. So one more time. I start at the y-intercept, and then I use the slope as a roadmap. I go down two and to the right 
one and click. Oh no. And I can choose zero, zero, zero. Oh, I have to get rid of the shading. Well, do I, do I go clear or delete? There, I'm gonna have to do it over. All right, see what happens, see? All right. Straight line. I'm gonna draw the line X equals three. Here's three. And then line again. Start at two. Go down two and to the right one. Now, back to our little piece of paper. This was the shading for that. Now we have to do the shading for this. So we started at two. I better use another color. Start at two. Go down two into the right one. I can still use my favorite point. So I am going to use as my test point zero, zero. Now here's our inequality. Y is greater than or equal to two minus two X. So zero is greater than or equal to two minus two times zero, which is zero. So zero is greater than or equal to two. False. Zero is not greater than or equal to two. If it's really greater than or equal to, and it is. All right, well, so much for that. That means this for the blue gives me a false. So I'm going to be graphing, graphing, shading away. And where the black and the blue overlap is in here, in this triangle right here. Okay, so that changes things. I'm going to drag my paint bucket here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now we have to find the vertex, which is that point right there, the point where the two lines cross. When you've got inequalities, what would have been the solution of the system is called the vertex. So here we go. I change both of these to their line equations. So I'll have X equals, stop it. I'll have X equals three and Okay, y equals 2 minus 2x. All right, now, what to do here? This doesn't look like the others. Well, 
I could put them both into standard form, but why bother? This is X equals three. I'm just going to use substitution. If I put a three down here, then I'll have Y equals two minus two times three, which is two minus six, which is negative four. So my vertex should be at X equals three, Y equals negative four. Let's see if it looks like it could be true. Three, negative four, doggone. Okay, now let's talk for a minute more. If that had been a normal kind of equation with an X and a Y term and a number term, and, like this is, then I would have had to go through the whole elimination thing. But here I've only got, when you turn this into an equation, it's X equals three. So all you have to do is take that three and put it in for that X there and you can find out what y is. This doesn't happen very often, but it does sometimes, and it makes finding the vertex easy. Okay. Oh goodness, it's 11.52. Well, let's see if I find anything overwhelmingly difficult. Let's do this. Would I really put that on there? Yeah, I probably would. Okay. Um, F of X equals six X plus three and we need to find f of x plus h. I need to leave so I can get my other class. Okay, bye. Bye. Minus f of x over h. And so we would take f of x plus h equals six times x plus h plus three, and that would equal six X plus six H plus three, so that F of X plus H minus F of X equals six X plus six H plus three, that's f of x plus h, minus f of x, which is 6x plus 3. So this is going to be 6, uh, I don't need that now, 6x plus 6h plus 3. And now distribute the negative sign here and here. So I'll have minus 6 x minus 3, then combine like terms, 6x minus 6x is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, and so we'll be left with 6h. So f of x plus h minus f of x over H is going to be 6H over H. The H's cancel, and I'm left with 6.
and this is number 27. Twenty-eight. Determine the domain and the range. Well, I kind of think you can do that. Okay. This graph goes forever to the left, down and to the left, but to the left, and forever to the right, so, the uh, domain is going to be, oops, the domain is going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity, paren. Now the range only goes from negative one, negative two, negative three, y equals negative three is the lowest y coordinate. And y equals positive four is the high, uh-uh, no it's not. This keeps going down forever. So negative infinity is going to be the lower boundary, if you could call it a boundary of um, the range. Negative infinity, comma, but y equals four is definitely the highest that this graph goes. So I would put a four and then a bracket. So domain is X and range is Y, right? Correct. Very good. Twenty nine. We have a piecewise defined function. OK. For x less than or equal to 3, g of x equals that. For x greater than 3, g of x equals this. Well, this isn't just less than or greater than. This is to the left of and to the right of. So if I draw a number line and make the number 3, then to the left of three and including three, g of x equals x plus eight. And I put this kind of little symbol for myself there to let me know that x can equal three there. And over on the other side of three, g of x equals 4 equals 4 minus x, but x cannot equal 3. Okay, so we're being asked what is g of negative 5, what is g of 3, and what is g of 7? So I have to arrange these numbers with reference to 3. We've got negative 5, over here, and we've got seven over here. So G of negative five is going to be calculated over here. And G of three is going to be calculated there. 3 plus 8 is 11. However, g of 7 is over on the right side of 3, so it's going to be calculated here. 
g of 7 is 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. And so I would put this 3, 11, and 7. And that's how you do that. Not terribly difficult. Here's a matrix. Let's see what else is there. A matrix, the same one. No, there's a minor change. On that last one that we just did, number 29, on G of 7, you put 7, but you have 3 on. So I was just wondering if it's negative 3 or 7. Oh, no. Well, it's probably too late. Maybe not. Will it let me delete? <gasps> negative 3. You're right. Thank you. I'm being careless again. Thank you. Uh. <clears throat> All right, 30 and 31 are matrices. <clears throat> and this is Gonzalez Manufacturing. And all of that is up in week three. So I can do them now if you want to hang around or I can make a separate little video and do those. like well i i know that i could have some help on the gonzalez wait i don't know if i gonzalez manufacturing yeah that is not an easy problem let's do it because i don't think i have any notes on that <clears throat> okay yeah they they're in the week three for wednesday I did put them there. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad to do this again. So, because the numbers are different this time. Gonzalez Manufacturing borrowed $33,000. Part of the money was borrowed at 12%, part at 14%, and part at 16%. So there are three parts to the money that was borrowed. Um, so I can let X equal the money borrowed at 12%. And Y equal the money borrowed at 14% interest, and C equal the money borrowed at 16% interest. Oh, oh, oh well, interest. OK, so that means that X plus Y plus Z equals 33,000 dollars. Now, and it says the annual interest was 4640. And then it goes on to talk about that other fact, but right now let's just deal with the amount, the annual interest. So this is going to be the amount of interest and the amount of money. So I'm not going to put that there.
uh, 0.12 x plus 0.14 y plus 0.16 z equals 46.40. So 4, 6, 4, 0. Okay, this is the amount of money that Gonzales Manufacturing had to pay for borrowing that much money. And this is the amount of interest they had to pay for borrowing that much money. And this is the amount of interest they had to pay for borrowing that much money. And the problem says that all this interest adds up to $4,640. All right, and we're given one more fact. And that is that the total amount of money borrowed at 12% and 14%, that's X and Y, is twice the amount borrowed at 16%. So the total amount borrowed at 12% and 14% is twice the amount borrowed at 16%, which is what that is. Those are the facts I'm given, and I'm asked to find um, the amount borrowed at each interest rate. So I need to find X and Y and C. So the first thing I'm going to do is this needs to be over here under the Z's. So I'm going to subtract 2Z from both sides of this equation. Like that. So this equals zero now. And so if I want to write a matrix for this, I would write 1, 1, 1, 33,000. Point 12, point 14, point 16, 46.40 and 1, 1, negative 2, 0. And so this would be the basic matrix, but to make life a little easier for yourself, you might want to multiply every number here by 100 so that you can move those decimal points over and not have decimals. Because it'll just be easier to handle. So the first thing I'm going to do, here's row one and row two and row three. The first thing I'm going to do is just multiply row two by 100. And now this is the matrix I'll get. Row one, row two, row three will be one, one, one. 33,000, 12, 14, 16. Now this gets multiplied by 100 also. So that's going to be 4, 6, 4, 0, 0, 0. And then this is going to be one, 
1, negative 2, 0. Okay, so first thing, yeah, first thing, I'm going to turn this, what color is that? Nah, I don't want that. Um, Why did it disappear? Now, what was I going to do? Yes. There, I want to turn that into a zero. So my, my strategy is going to be to multiply all the numbers in row one by negative 12. So that'll be my recipe. Negative 12 times row one plus row two, just the way it is. And so negative 12 times row one is gonna be easy at first, negative 12 negative 12, negative 12, and then negative 12 times 33,000. And so that, let, yeah, that is going to be over here. Negative. All right. Negative three nine six thousand. Negative three nine six zero zero zero. And row two is going to be 12, 14, 16, um, 4, 6, 4, 0, 0, 0. So we'll have 0, we'll have 2, we'll have 4, and then Negative three nine six zero 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 plus four six four zero zero zero. And that gives us sixty eight thousand. Okay, that's our new row two. So now we will have a new row two. Wait a minute here. Row one, row two, row three. The new row two is zero, two, four, sixty-eight thousand. And one, row one is one, one, one. 33,000. And row three hasn't changed yet. So one, one, negative two, zero. Now, okay. 
hey, I need to, hey, hey, hey. There. I need to change this into a zero, and that looks like it's going to be pretty easy to do. I'll just multiply row three by negative one. And then I'll add it to row one. So that's going to be my recipe. Or strategy. I'm going to take row one and add it to negative one times row three. So row one. What are negative one times one just equal negative one instead of zero? I'm using row one and row three. So I'll be adding one and I need that to be a negative one. Oh, got it. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> no, Sorry. that's fine. Yes, always say something. You know, I can wander off. One, 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 33,000. And negative one times row three will be negative one, negative one, positive two, and still zero. And so now I add them together and I get, oh my goodness, zero, zero, three, thirty, three thousand. Look at that, that's like Christmas. It cuts the process short. So this is going to be my new row three. And I'll have row one, row two, row three. I'll have zero, zero, three, thirty, three, thousand and zero two four sixty eight thousand and one 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 thirty three thousand okay so now this is our last matrix because since this gave us two zeros there, we've got our lower triangle of zeros already. So now we can go back to X's, Y's, and Z's. Like I said, it's like a Christmas present. Okay, so X plus Y plus Z equals 33,000. And 2Y plus 4Z equals 68,000. And 3Z equals 33,000. Where this is row one, this is row two, and this is row three. And so I start back solving by finding row three. Three Z equals 33, thousand divide by three divide by three z equals eleven thousand cool now row two is two y plus 
plus 4z equals 68,000. And z is 11,000. So 2y plus 4 times 11,000 equals 68,000. So 2y plus 44,000 equals 68,000. And I subtract 44,000 from each side of the equation. so that I'll have 2y equals 0, 0, 0, 8 minus 4 is 4, and uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, and then I divide by 2, and I divide by 2. So y equals 12,000. Now, um, um, insert. So I can move this up. Row one is one um, X, Y, Z, 33,000. All right, now, Y is 12,000. And Z is 11,000. That's equals 33,000. So X plus 23,000 equals 33,000. Okay, subtract 23,000. Subtract 23,000. So X is 10,000. So we now know Ten thousand, twelve thousand, eleven thousand. Ten thousand. Twelve thousand. And X is what, 10,000? No, 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 no. Yeah. All right, yeah, I was going backwards, backwards, backwards. Okay. That's a hard one. All right. Our first answer was our last answer. Z and X is 10,000. Make sure I've got those. 10,000, 12,000, 11,000.
And there the Burks paying their babysitter. Would you like that one too? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Okay, 